Parochial, thank you. Parochial cooperation and competition play a role in carrying capacity stress and intergroup conflict. So again, this is kind of in line with what we were talking about last week. Um, what roles do group cooperation carrying capacity stress play in intergroup conflict, specifically in paro parochialism? I'm so sorry, I cannot pronounce that. <laughs> it's a weird, um, it's a weird word. <laughs> <laughs> the author, as you guys can see, presented an overview of numerous research experiments and findings related to the purpose of this article. Um, basically, an overview of research related to this type of cooperation and competition, categorization, basically how beliefs, preferences, behaviors are formed, um, and how they become parochial and um, yeah, basically just how we make decisions, how we learn and change, and also how bias plays a role in that. So again, is what we've been talking about um, over the last couple of weeks and to some extent we were talking about in our last um, study. And also these authors examined studies related to hormone modulators, which I thought was interesting. Um, and basically using those evidence that these may also be related to cooperation and competition um, and basically what research we can do in the future to kind of understand this a little bit better. Um, yeah, Noah, if you're okay going to the next slide. Yep. Um, and the results were basically that many studies that are conducted resulted in a high likelihood of groups engaging in these types of cooperation or competition. Basically, it seems that we're more likely to naturally choose to deviate along that way, specifically when it comes to identifying with our in-groups. Um, and it's noted also that this may be the inherent cause of intergroup conflict, which is interesting again, um, and that carrying capacity stress can also result from these types of cooperation. Um, and of course, when you have that, it's likely that competition will follow. Um, and then just going with the natural, with the uh, key takeaway, again, going back to what we've been talking about with bias, um, it's perfectly natural, I think, for bias to occur with a bias for our in-group preference for our in-group to occur even at a neurological level. Um, it may be a natural instinct that we have and uh, cooperation and competition can often lead to in-group conflict. Uh, but I think it's important that we understand that preferences and biases for our in-groups due to survival of some level are natural. Um, and this may be the cause of group cooperation, maybe the cause of carrying capacity stress. Um, and then these types of cooperation may expand one's group and place stress on the resources available to multiple groups. Um, so, yeah, what everyone's thoughts on that one. What's, what's, what's carrying capacity? I'm not familiar with that. I'm trying to see in the, um, oh. in the study if it, let me see. What, well, I'm looking at like, um, so is it, maybe it means the number, it says the number of people, other number of people that a region can support without right. degradation. So it's like how many people can this system support, essentially. Does that sound right? I think so. And I'm trying to see a little bit more of um, parochial um, cooperation just to get a little bit more information about what that was. Um, it basically, it seems like it's talking about the motivation or desire to ward off and subordinate and like basically rivaling out groups. So I think to what you were saying, Jeremy, about um, like the amount of capacity that you have for a group, I think like competition and cooperation for that space is what can lead to in-group, out-group conflict. So this is interesting. To, well, to, to my understanding, parochialism, so parochialism is the idea that you have, like it's, it's like a limited and narrow outlook, yeah. right? On, on a very specific, so I don't know if that, that helps contribute. I think that, um, I found this interesting. I actually posted this on um, on Reddit, and mm -hmm. it got a, a bunch of like a bunch of hits on it. People people were like, "Wow, this is really really interesting." Just that the fact that it might be an inherent cause of intergroup conflict. Um, yeah, but. I think I think it, it. There's a lot of I'm doing just more like Google searching, and it seems like there's a lot of research on how this is really the inherent source of group conflict. I mean, yeah, think about it. Think about it, right? If, if somebody is uh, has tunnel vision and, and, and doesn't see outside of what their lens shows them and, and people that are that wear the same lenses as they do, they, we can only see what we know and believe already. We're not open to out, out new things, new opportunities, new knowledge. Then if an, another group comes in wearing different lenses and right. saying, Hey, try these out. Of course, that's going to create intergroup conflict, right? Because it's like, no, we wear these ones. We don't wear those. Uh, so, I mean, I, it makes it makes perfect sense to me, right? If those, if, if we have a narrow mindset, 
we're going to be more likely to be in conflict with those that have a different a, a belief or a, a knowledge that we don't yet know, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's a very yeah, good point. It's like the more dogmatic and ideological we become, the harder it is to be associating with anyone or to be hearing anyone else that doesn't that doesn't believe in our story, um, let alone disagrees with the story. I was, it's funny because I was just having, I just was on a coaching call and I was having this conversation with this girl who's having a lot of trouble with her brother because her brother is basically like a survivalist. And, and, and like, so every conversation they have is about, she's got to prepare for like becoming whatever it is, like just like some, I don't know whether he believes the world's going to end or a war is going to happen or something. And she's, okay. he's stockpiling stuff and all this stuff. So, and she, and they get in and she just tells him like, I don't want to talk about this. And they got to the point, I guess they got in a big fight about it last night because she just doesn't want to talk about it. He won't stop. And, she, and he makes her feel bad. And she started crying and stuff. And, and, uh, and I, and I'm just like, and we were talking about what, how to frame this whole thing. And it, and it, it reminds me very much of this like sort of parochial, parochial view um, and which causes conflict. It's like, he's, he has this belief system that's going to protect him from the thing that he feels is a threat. If anybody doesn't support the belief system, it feels like they're threatening the, the sort of the sol solidarity of that wall he's built, the solidarity of the protection mechanism that he's built. And so maybe this is kind of related as like, if we're really narrow-minded and we're really ideolog ideological and dogmatic about a particular belief system, anybody that seems to counteract it in any way feels like they're directly threatening us on like a very basic survival level almost. Right. So, yeah, yeah, I, the first thing that like kind of rang a bell in my mind when, when listening to you talk about this, Alyssa, was religion. And right. I can't help but feel that like uh, that is sort of very, really common, right? When, when, when one has a particular belief and I, I, like as Jeremy says, it's so dogmatic in that belief that they can't even fathom someone else believing something totally different then then there becomes that like hostility and and conflict between different religion religious groups so or yeah and often i at least i from what i've seen too is it's often within the same religious group too you have the people mm -hmm. who like have this one mindset like we only you can only believe it like this and then once somebody else tries to say no we can we can think of it in this different way they're like what are you doing like heresy kind of you know you kind of go into yeah. that that whole thing and that's that that parochial cooperation and competition right so those that are being more competitive would be would lean more well and though this is saying both right so cooperation and competition lead to intergroup yeah. conflict there's 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 research that shows that people that have that have like their in group and their their ideological in group that they feel they feel worse and they are more willing to punish group members of their own group if those members um, betray the ideologies of the group as opposed to out group members. Like they feel worse about people that betray the in group as part of the in group than they would about out group members. Mm -hmm. So that, so I, so, and I don't know if that's related to this pro group co cooperation, but, uh, but it's like very narrow minded cooperation. Like we have to cooperate in this very narrow way, you know. And if you deviate, then 